Attorney General. So you think All right. Fast and dry this thing. Huh? <laughs> Are you good? I'm ready. Let's go get him. Jonathan, we ready to go? Yes, sir. I stand up there with you. You want that side over there, huh? Well, I'm Secretary John Kelly, Department of Homeland Security. I'm joined today by the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions, and uh, Senator Ron Johnson, who's the uh, Chairman of the Homeland Security Committee in the United States Senate. I'll make a few comments, then these gentlemen will make comments. Well, I guess we're going to open it up for a, a few minutes of question and answer. In our system of government, the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Justice enforce the laws passed by the United States Congress. That includes our immigration laws. These laws exist to keep our people safe and our nation sovereign. Both the Attorney General and I are serious about border security and enforcing our immigration laws. In accordance with the executive order signed earlier this year by the, our President, we have ended dangerous catch and release enforcement policies. We have significantly increased detainers for deportation and we have arrested more criminal aliens. We will continue to expand our approach to deterring illegal migration. That includes constructing a physical barrier, supporting it with technology, and, pro and patrolling it with dedicated and professional men and women of DHS. It also includes our approach of prosecuting anyone who pays traffickers to smuggle people into our country. That in includes especially those who smuggle children, including family members that smuggle children or pay to have them smuggled. Human smuggling across our border puts individuals, especially children, at great risk of assault, abuse, and even death at the hands of the smugglers. There's nothing the Attorney General and I want to do more than to put human smugglers out of business, and we will do everything in our power and within the law to do just that. Our efforts are working. As I reported back in March, where we've seen a dramatic reduction in illegal migration across the southwest border. In fact, March apprehensions were 30 percent lower than February apprehensions. This is an overall reduction of 64 percent over last year. These numbers are lower because DHS and DOJ have shown that we're serious about border security and enforcing our immigration laws. The dedicated and selfless men and women who do this important, dangerous work, have the knowledge, the training, and the resources, and this is a big one, they know that their administration and department have their backs. I'm honored to serve with the men and women of DHS who do so much every day to keep our country safe. And now I'd like to introduce the Attorney General for his comments. Thank you very much, General Kelly. Thank you for your fabulous leadership. And you can feel, as I have uh, last week in Nogales and to yesterday in El Paso and here, uh, the new morale and spirit among our homeland uh, security personnel. Thank you for your leadership. And as you indicated, uh, fundamentally, the, ch the person who chose you and who has inspired our officers is the President of the United States. I knew that if we had a strong leader who spoke clearly and boldly about ending this Ill illegality, we would have progress. But I got to say, it's exceeded what I thought possible so far. So I'm excited about the path we're on. We're doing the right thing. We're working every day to have a lawful system of immigration, one that we can be proud of, one that serves the national interest. General Kelly, thank you for your cooperation with the Department of Justice, and you can be sure that our department is behind you and your personnel every step of the way. So it is a partnership. Now, yesterday when in El Paso, we met with federal law enforcement and immigration officials there. Today, we've already had briefings from uh, Homeland Security Investigations and the Ote Mesa, Mesa de Detention Facility. All of this has been informative and renewed our commitment to ensure that our men and women in law enforcement know that we have their back, that our prosecutors here and around the country know that this administration is serious about ending the lawlessness. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security and Department of Justice work hand in glove on these issues, and I'm so pleased to work with General Kelly and his team. 
The Secretary and I have both spoken extensively about the dangers imposed by transnational gangs like MS-13, whose motto, whose motto is murder, rape, and control. Uh, that encapsulate, encapsulates why they must be eradicated. They cannot be allowed to continue. We've also spoken about the dangers posed by lax immigration policies that allow these gang members to return even after they've been deported. That ends now. Today, I think it's important to talk about the sanctuary jurisdictions. It was nearly two years ago that Kate Steinle was shot and killed, dying in her father's arms along Pier 14 in San Francisco. The alleged shooter was an illegal immigrant with seven prior felony convictions who had been deported from this country five times. Only weeks earlier, the city had released him from custody after being apprehended again. Even though the federal uh, Im immigration authorities uh, had filed a detainer requesting that he be held in custody until they could remove him for deportation proceedings. Even worse, this man admitted he came to San Francisco in part because of its sanctuary policies. So today, the Department of Justice sent nine, uh, letters to nine jurisdictions that were identified by the Obama administration as having policies that potentially violate federal law and which receive millions of dollars in federal grants. These jurisdictions have until June 30th to send their legal justifications for why they are not in violation of federal law, and the state of California is one of these jurisdictions. California is no stranger to transnational gangs, and neither is New York. MS-13 was founded in Los Angeles and is on the rise now throughout the whole country, enriching themselves by peddling poison drugs in our communities, trafficking children for sexual exploitation, children as young as 12 years of age, and inflicting horrific violence in the communities where they operate. As you know too well here, Escondido's gang violence has jumped recently between two violent gangs, a warring for turf, more shootings, more guns, more terrorized neighborhoods. Sanctuary jurisdictions have put known gang members back on the streets uh, to join the West Side Gang in Escondido. Just the other day, it was reported that a local prosecutor in California went so far as to intentionally lower violent and heinous domestic abuse charges against a repeat offender so that the abuser wouldn't be deported. Think about the message that sends. If you are an alien and commit domestic violence, you will get special treatment. Prosecutors will charge you with a lesser crime so you can stay in the country. Enough is enough. When city politicians force local law enforcement to release criminals from Rikers Island, violent gangs and criminals benefit. Sanctuary jurisdictions put criminals back on the streets. They help these gangs to refill their ranks and puts innocent life, including the lives of countless uh, law-abiding immigrants, in danger by refusing to share vital information with federal law enforcement. So I urge California, New York, and other jurisdictions to reconsider. Our federal law enforcement officers and prosecutors stand ready to work with you because every neighborhood, every street corner deserves to be free from gang violence. Thank you again, Secretary Kelly, for your leadership. The work that you are doing is improving our situation daily. And now I'll turn it over to one of my favorite and most respected members in the United States Senate, Senator Ron Johnson. Uh, he had a big win from Wisconsin for re-election. He chairs the Homeland Security Committee. His work is essential to helping us do our jobs. And Ron, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being on top of these issues because I was extremely impressed today to see how knowledgeable you are on the challenges our men and women face. Ron Johnson. Well, th thank you, Attorney General Sessions and S Secretary Kelly. 
Uh, one of the main reasons we come here, in addition to learning, and that's uh, the main reason, but also just to thank the men and women that staff uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the Department of Homeland Security, and local law enforcement. Uh, as the Attorney General is talking about, the, the people they're dealing in these dealing with in these gangs are some of the most evil and barbaric people on the planet. And every day, the men and women of these law, local law enforcement law enforcement agencies, public safety officials, leave their their homes, the safety of their homes. They are literally laying down their or putting their lives at risk to keep uh, our homeland safe. So we're here and we're thanking them for that. Now, I've been here for six years in this position, two years as Chairman of Homeland Security. We've had 23 hearings on border security alone. Well, one thing I certainly recognize is over the last administration, we got very good at apprehending, processing, and dispersing people that come to this country illegally. But there's a new administration in town, an administration that is going to enforce our laws. So now it's going to be apprehension and enforcement and we are already seeing the benefits of that kind of resolve, that kind of strength, that kind of dedication to enforcing our rule of law. And like Secretary Kelly said a couple days ago, we're not going to apologize for enforcing our law and taking the actions that must be taken to keep this nation and Americans safe. The other comment I just want to make is it has been remarkable. Uh, Department of Homeland Security has been an agency that has been troubled, that has been plagued by low morale. And I think largely because the men and women that have that courage have not been able to or given the authority to carry out their job and do their duty. Under this administration, they've been given that authority, and they have been expressing to us ever since the election. Their morale is high. They are so thankful that we finally have an administration that has made the commitment to secure our border and keep this nation safe. And so at Secretary Kelly and Attorney General uh, sessions is, are going to do is they are committed to continuing to force our law enforcement agencies or give them the opportunity to enforce our laws and that is going to make a tremendous amount of difference. And so again, I, I'm glad to partner with Secretary Kelly, Attorney General Sessions to do just that. Thank you. I guess any questions? We recommend that cities work uh, with the federal law enforcement uh, to identify criminals who uh, uh, are illegal or otherwise subject to be deporting, deported and deporting them. So that's what we're seeking their cooperation to do. I do not believe that uh, argument is a sound one. I believe it's more of an excuse than a reason. I believe many, many cities reject that and otherwise cooperate with the federal government. And so we'd like our cities uh, that are uh, being tempted by this sanctuary ideology to reevaluate what they're doing. Uh, let's work together so that we can focus on the criminal element, and that's really where what we're focusing on when we complain about sanctuary cities. We're talking about them having arrested somebody for a serious offense, and we're asking them simply to tell the federal government that they've apprehended this person who is subject to deportation, and then General Kelly and his team will set about to protect that city from that person's criminality by removing them. And remember, people don't have a right to demand entry into the United States and certainly not the right to come unlawfully and then commit crimes and then complain about being deported. We've got, our head, we've got to get our heads right on this issue. I think we can, uh, hopefully we can avoid fights over it, but it's important for law enforcement. If, uh, let, me, let me just add to that, if I could, that uh, ideally the best place for us to pick up uh, these illegal cr criminals is in uh, jails and prisons. And it's inconceivable to me that an elected official at any level would prefer uh, these kind of men and women to be released into the community than to turn them over to federal law enforcement, ICE, so that we can take them right, uh, put them right in proceedings to get them out of the country. If they don't do that, uh, then we have to go into neighborhoods. We have to go into courthouses. We have to go wherever uh, we can find them 
and apprehend them. So if we had more cooperation, and let me tell you, regardless of what you hear for the most part, the, the police departments and the sheriff departments want to cooperate with us, turning these men and women over, criminals over to us in, uh, in the jails. They know that if we don't do that, then we have to go to the neighborhoods and other places. So that's the appeal I have. Police departments, or more importantly, actually, uh, politicians who are elected, listen to your police departments and uh, cooperate with us, and we won't go into neighborhoods, and consequently you won't have these uh, accusations, at least. I don't really believe them, but these accu accusations that people are unwilling to report crimes. I mean, 911 is an anonymous phone call if you want to make it. I don't understand why anyone would not pick up the phone and report something in their community. They don't even have to give their name. Next question. I totally reject that. I think that is a despicable statement. We would never do that. The Department of Justice is absolutely committed to race neutral and fair application of the law in every circumstance, but we have lawful systems of uh, immigration, and shouldn't that be enforced? Is that racist to say so? Is it wrong to say that if somebody enters our country unlawfully and they get caught next week in Los Angeles, that that's how, somehow an abusive thing to apprehend them and deport them? Uh, surely it can't be the law that if you get past the border for a week, you get to stay in the country indefinitely. So I, I, I think this is a kind of extremist statement that I totally reject. I think the American people are tired of it, and the American people would like to see us fix this system. We admit 1.1 million people to this country every year lawfully to permanent residents in America. We're not a, a nation that rejects immigration. We have people crossing our borders every day, and, and uh, so I reject that argument. Sir, would you take back the statement about Hawaii and uh, We're moving on. Go ahead. You got it. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank federal judges in America. I simply made the point that one of them, not subject to having the advice of General Kelly, the Attorney General, the Secretary of Defense, the CIA Director, one judge has overruled the constitutional authority of the President of the United States uh, to protect America through his executive order, which I believe will be confirmed on appeal, and his judgment will be reduced, re reversed. This fellow right here. Yep. Well, I don't know. I, I, I would say this about New York. New York has done some great things in criminal justice. Uh, they are uh, following policies that have proven to reduce crime in America. Uh, we've had a, a disagreement with the mayor over sanctuary city policies. I strongly disagree with uh, his ideas on that. But for many years now, the broken windows philosophy, the community-based policing philosophy, the way they process criminal cases in New York have created a murder rate far below that of cities like Chicago and Baltimore. So I, I don't know exactly what that comment was. I haven't heard it. But I do believe uh, what New York has to be cautious about is uh, altering those highly successful policies that have proven uh, really to be models that I think other cities should consider. One more, Steve. Well, we don't want to arrest politicians, but I do think that the <laughs> you're okay, Ron. I'm a citizen. I'm a recovering politician. Um, 
but I, I think um, the idea that the general shared is rank and file police officers know this is not a good idea. But chiefs of police in cities work for the mayors. They work for the city council, and they reflect their policies. That's who they're hired by and fired by. And so I, I do think uh, the American people need to communicate with their leaders and let them know if they have a view on this one way or the other. And the democratic process can often play out, and politicians can sometimes uh, uh, have a better view after they've talked to their constituents. Can I make one comment? You know, Today we've gone through a laundry list of precedents set by courts and uh, other types of rulings that have really hampered law enforcement's ability to carry out the law. And it's incredibly frustrating and it makes our nation less safe. Now, I want to make one point, particularly about ICE officers, being given the opportunity to apprehend people where it's easier. And that, that was a comment made in our committee, but I've made the comment, no, it makes it safer for them as well. It's extremely important when we make it easier for ICE uh, agents to apprehend criminals, we are making it a lot safer so they can return home to their family. Let's not, let's not forget that. Let's honor these agents. Again, they are risking their lives to keep this nation safe. We need to do everything we can to support their efforts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.